wealth creation. Stop working for money and start working towards acquiring assets. Now, don't get me wrong. Money plays an important role in building wealth. But if you only focus on making money, you will never see the bigger picture. An asset is something of value that you own. As a smart investor, we're only going to focus on assets that appreciate in value. A car, for example, is an asset that depreciates in value, unless it's a classic and you work on the upkeep, because it is worth less the more miles you put on it by driving it around. Not only are we going to focus on appreciating assets, we'll also use these specific assets for their increasing income streams. However, not all assets produce an income stream. Wealthy people continuously acquire assets. This is how they keep getting wealthier, and because there is no retirement date for wealth, like there is for a career, they keep acquiring assets until they pass away. Their wealth is then strategically passed down to their family. Warren Buffett, the third wealthiest person on this planet, and his partner Charlie Munger, are over 85 years old, still working on acquiring assets. Wealthy versus Rich do not confuse wealthy individuals for rich ones. Wealth is always acquired through assets. An NFL player making $20 million is rich, but does not own any assets. Also, you can be a high-income earner, but if you are drowning in debt, you are not even close to being wealthy. For example, a vice president of sales who works for a Fortune 500 company and makes a salary of $1.4 million a year, he or she is rich but has a debt amount that totals $3.6 million. This person needs to seriously take a look at his or her expenses and make some major adjustments. When I mention wealth, I'm talking about owning valuable assets beyond your debt. Wealth that produces income for you even when you do not have to put in any labor. Working for money. When you work for money, the amount you can make is limited by your skills. The more knowledge and skills you acquire, the more you're worth to your company, and you could potentially make more money. That's why someone working a fast food job or as a sales associate at your local clothing store does not make a healthy income. The skills required to do such jobs are basic, and you don't even need any type of education. Most of the time, you do not even get any training. You just start working on the floor your first day on the job. You are also easily replaceable by anybody and everybody. People with specialized skills are not as easily replaceable and can demand and negotiate a higher salary. For example, computer programmers, lawyers, and doctors. Working for money is also limited by your physical health. Once you get terribly ill or you cannot physically work anymore, the money you are making stops coming in because you cannot use your labor in exchange for money anymore. The corporate ladder. The typical middle-class family focuses on climbing the corporate ladder, spending time building up the company they work for, focusing on realizing the owner's dream for the company. Instead, they should be working on their own dream of financial freedom. While climbing the corporate ladder, you'll be given more responsibilities, work, stress, and less free time every time you get promoted to a higher position. This is a catch-22. In order to make more money, you will have to give up something. This could be time you could spend with your family or your sanity because stress will peak its ugly head. While putting all your time and effort in the company, you'll also set up a retirement account with the company and put substantially less thought in it compared to your daily tasks at work. When you just start your career, retirement is the last thing on your mind. However, it needs to be the first thing on your list of things to get serious about if you are young because you have time on your side. Time for your investments to grow. The sooner you start, the less you would have to invest in order to reach your retirement goals. If your retirement goal is to reach $1 million, starting at the age of 24, you would only have to invest a little over $370 a month to reach your goal at age 65, with an average 7% growth rate. See Figure 1.1, Retirement Goal. However, if you started investing at the age of 40, you would need to play catch-up and invest $1,300 a month to reach your $1 million goal at age 65. With age comes an increasingly urgent feeling for security, and that is when retirement is taken more seriously. Most of the time, 
People start thinking about their retirement when it's too late and they have to start playing catch up. This happens in their late 40s, early 50s. They can see 60 on the horizon and know that there aren't many more working years left before retirement. It's also at this time when your health can become a serious issue and age discrimination is taking place in the job market. Working for assets. There are only three vehicles that allow you to acquire assets to build wealth. Business, real estate, stock market. Interestingly enough, most of us are, to a certain extent, familiar with these three vehicles. Chances are you already have a retirement account set up at your job with investments in the stock market. You might own or rent a home, so you know the basics of real estate, and you already work for a business, so you have some knowledge about business models. In order to become wealthy off these three wealth builders, you need to change the way in which you interact with them. Instead of working for a company, you need to create or buy your own company. Instead of being a tenant, you need to become the landlord. Instead of giving your money to a greedy, shady investment banker and crossing your fingers for the better, or only investing your money in index funds, you need to educate yourself and start buying your own stocks. You are supposed to own valuable assets that create a passive income stream. This is different from earned income, which is money you only receive in exchange for labor. The goal is to turn earned income into passive income from assets. How you use these wealth builders will either leave you broke, rich, or wealthy. If you jump in and try to create wealth without any knowledge, you will lose your shirt and end up broke. Many people have been scammed by investing their hard-earned money into unknown businesses or in the stock market not knowing they got bamboozled until it was too late. If you use these wealth builders only to create earned income, you could become rich but not wealthy, like someone flipping houses for a profit, only working for companies, or someone day trading for a living. Lastly, if you convert these wealth builders into assets, you increase your chances of becoming wealthy. Ownership is key. When I mention assets, the focus is on ownership. When you work on collecting assets, you are working on owning something of value that you can pass down to your family. Ownership of the right assets also gets you closer to financial freedom. When you work for a company, your primary reason for being there is the money you are earning. There are additional benefits, of course, like social connections, a feeling of belonging to a group, and learning skills that might benefit you on your career path. However, money is still the primary reason you work for a company. Everything else is just a benefit that comes with the job. Imagine being at a job interview and you are told that you won't get paid, but the company has really fun social activities and you will get to meet nice people. You would probably get up and leave thinking they must be crazy. The problem with working for a company is that you cannot pass your job down to your family. Collecting or creating assets that can sustain your lifestyle will start out as a slow learning process and there is risk involved. But if you stick with it, you will have more personal abundance compared to working for someone else. The essence of time. Money comes and goes and assets can be bought or sold, but time is finite. The amount of time you have is literally limited to your time on this earth. To make matters even more interesting, we don't have a clue how much time we have left. Some would even say time is more valuable than what you own. You need to make time work in your favor. Ever heard of the saying, time flies? Or where has the time gone? If you go through life one day at a time never planning for your future, time will catch up to you eventually, and you'll be talking about all the things you should have done while you were younger and still had the time. But if you own valuable assets, time is on your side, because with time, you gain more assets or the assets that you own increase in value. As time passes, your assets create you more wealth. Investing in yourself financial riches for a lifetime and beyond. The path to riches is waiting for you with open arms. Besides an overabundance of riches, wealth has additional benefits. Financial freedom, peace of mind, no more long hours at work, exuberant lifestyle, and great health. Why work your whole life stressing out over projects and unrealistic deadlines, horrible bosses, unqualified coworkers, and all the irritants that present itself in corporate life? while you can take that same energy and work on creating wealth and ownership instead. 
Not many people are able to generate wealth that can last them for a lifetime and beyond. Even many of our senior citizens who have worked their whole life and retired out of the job market have financial issues and distress. Reason for this is that people focus on making money first and wealth secondary. The typical person focuses on working at a company and climbing up the corporate ladder or switching from one company to another every so often, getting a higher salary in the process. While in the working years, people focus on all the essentials, a comfortable home in a great neighborhood, transportation to and from work, good school for their children, and their retirement account. Nowadays, many people think that their home and retirement accounts are their wealth generators, but this is not how wealthy people think. The secret to creating wealth is not through working for companies your whole life, but through assets acquired from the three wealth builders. Wealth Builder Number 1 – Business Many entrepreneurs have been able to build their wealth fast with their business, whether it is an online or a brick-and-mortar business. Just look at some of the wealthiest people on the planet, like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Larry Ellison. Elon Musk has created and sold many successful businesses. A large portion of his wealth comes from his current company Tesla, which creates electric vehicles and solar energy systems. His company is worth over $50 billion. Jeff Bezos, creator of Amazon.com, had an idea back in the early 90s. His idea was to set up an e-commerce store where you could buy books online after he noticed that physical stores were limited by the physical space of the store. His online store would not have this limitation. However, he quickly learned that he was limiting his store by only selling books, so he opened up his online store to sell just about everything else. Right now, his company is worth over $500 billion. Larry Ellison created Oracle, a software business that created the relational databases we use every day, and most of us don't even know it, because it is the underlying technological infrastructure that powers most of our daily activities, from the cell phones that we use to swiping your credit card and more. The Oracle Corporation is worth over $200 billion. As you can see, the sky is the limit when it comes to how creative you can be with starting your own business and the amount of money you can generate. You can start small as a one-man team by offering lawn mowing services or snow shoveling. You can go the online route and start selling products online through Shopify, information products, or services through lead generation. If you have more capital to work with, you could start a franchise fast food chain, healthy food, or even fitness centers. There are many options available when you start your own business. There are also many tax benefits with setting up a business. Many small entrepreneurs start their business as a sole proprietary, and once they start to get the ball rolling, they incorporate it into the Flexible Limited Liability Corporation, LLC. The steps to make your business work is to only focus on what you are good at and outsource or automate everything else. The last thing you want to do is work on your business 24-7, not allowing you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. For example, you start your own online e-commerce dropshipping website. You've done the research on which platform to use, the products you are going to sell, and how to advertise it. You are excellent at coming up with unique products to sell and love analyzing your revenue and expense reports. You are severely lacking in creativity and coding skills. You are good with data analysis, but bad at coding e-commerce website, graphic design, and online marketing. You could outsource your web development, hire both a great graphic designer and a digital media buyer, which will allow you to focus on analyzing your website's performance. It is extremely important that your business involves something you are interested and believe in. If you don't believe in your own business, no one else will. Also, if you aren't interested or passionate about your business, it will fail. You will be spending many hours alone working on your business, so it's best to choose a business venture you have some interest in. Many starting entrepreneurs fail a couple of times before they are successful. Their past failures are used as a learning experience on what not to do for the next business idea. You also want to stay away from being a one-man team. It's fine to start out by yourself, but you need to keep expansion in mind by adding more employees. A physician who has a private practice is a one-man team. If he takes a vacation, 
gets sick, or even passes away. The whole business is at a standstill. Planning is of the essence before you decide on what type of business you want to run. Wealth Builder Number 2. Real Estate It's no secret that many wealthy individuals attain their riches through real estate. It's an old but stable method which will increase your wealth. Play it in your favor and you can set it up to not take much time away from your daily activities. There are many benefits to setting up a real estate empire. If you do it the right way, you can attain financial freedom while still growing your empire. Not only do you gain valuable skills, you also make valuable connections in the real estate world, which will be able to help you on your journey. Investors can create wealth in real estate through income properties. This allows you to collect rent payments from your tenants. Your rent payments should increase with time due to cost of living increases or improvements that you make to the properties. Also, the more properties you own, the more rent payments you will collect. If you need to pay off your bank loan, the rent payments that you collect are used to pay down the mortgage, so the tenant is actually helping you in paying down debt, but also the taxes and insurance. With debt pay down, your equity in the property grows, and once you pay off the mortgage, you own the property free and clear. Properties to focus on, commercial real estate, apartment complexes, strip malls, hotels, single-family homes, duplexes, triplexes, and quads. For investors just starting out, it's recommended to begin with duplexes, triplexes, or quads. Why? Because it costs considerably less money to buy these properties. If you get your numbers right, they will cash flow nicely, and in general, it's also easier to fill a duplex with a tenant compared to finding a business that wants to rent space in your commercial property. Wealth creation in real estate is through accumulating income properties that cash flow. This means that you are generating a cash distribution from your investment. If you plan on making around $400 on average in net cash flow from an income property, you can do the math to project out your financial freedom number. So if you want to make $100,000 a year with real estate, you would need around 20 to 21 income properties which will generate a little over $8,000 in net cash flow to reach this goal. Once you pay off the mortgage on these properties, your monthly income will jump even higher. Many people who jump into the real estate market try to flip houses. This is a good way to make money, but as a smart investor, we want to acquire appreciating assets that pay us income. Flipping houses can be a lot of work because you need to scout the market for homes on sale, buy them below value, renovate and then sell again. This leaves you back at square one with some money in your pocket, but no asset. What about working as a real estate agent? There's nothing wrong with making earned income, which is money that you have to work for, being your own boss as a real estate agent and making good money in the process. But as a real estate agent, you are still not acquiring any assets. As a smart investor, we only work for assets and we only sell assets once they don't generate any meaningful income for us. So in real estate, it's recommended to buy properties below market value and generate income consistently through rent payments, which would be your cash flow. Leverage money. A big advantage of real estate is that you can leverage other people's time and money for your investments. If there is a property available on the market for $100,000, you don't have to save up that total amount to purchase the property. You can use other people's money. If you deal with a bank, you would only have to put 20% down, which is $20,000, and the bank will loan you the other $80,000. Or if you are willing to live in your property and it is your first home, you could use an FHA loan, which only requires you to put 3.5% down. Let's say you wanted to buy a duplex, live in one side and rent out the other, for $150,000. With an FHA, Federal Housing Administration loan, you would only have to come up with $5,250 for the down payment. The rest would be the loan amount you would borrow from the bank, so $144,750. Keep in mind, however, that you will also have to fork up some money for the closing cost and PMI, Private Mortgage Insurance. Bank's Motive. The bank does not lend you money out of the kindness of their heart. The bank is in business to make money. So if the bank lends you $80,000 on a $100,000 property, on a 30-year mortgage at 4%,
you end up paying the bank $140,000 for the life of the loan. Why does the bank require you to put some money down? Because they want you to have some skin in the game. By putting 20% down, the bank is already in a good spot. If you default on your $80,000 loan on a property worth $100,000, the bank will take ownership. Even if they sell the property for $90,000, they still made $10,000 profit. Taxes not taken into account because they got it for $80,000. Other ways to get loans. You could also strike a deal with private lenders to get a loan from them. By being creative, you can come up with ways on how to put less money down or no money at all to acquire your income property. You should also use other people's time, skills to help you in real estate. You are just one person who cannot do everything, from keeping up with local tenant laws to knowing how to fix plumbing issues, you will have limited knowledge in one or more areas. It's recommended to hire the right people with the right credentials to make your life easier. Leveraging people's time. Having a team of experts cuts down your learning curve tremendously. It also saves you time from having to figure everything out on your own. Some experts you want to have on your team, real estate agents, property managers, mortgage brokers, attorneys, mentors, and contractors. Keep credit in check. Before you even think about buying a property, you need to make sure your credit score is error-free and as high as you can get it. Companies like CreditWise and Credit Karma allow you to see your credit score for free and what you can do to improve it. Some common practices you need to keep in mind when dealing with your credit score. Pay all your bills on time. Keep your credit card utilization under 10% of your total available credit. Average age of your credit accounts, higher is better. Total credit accounts, closed accounts also. Hard inquiries should be limited. Tip. I always try to increase my credit card limit every six months and only use a fraction of my available credit. Banks like to see that you can handle your credit responsibly. Only using a small amount of your available credit and paying it off on time will boost your credit score. Once you know your credit is up to par, it should be at least 600, you can then get a loan unless you will finance the purchase 100%, which is uncommon. If you go to a bank, they will pull your credit, look over your financial balance sheet, your debt versus assets, to determine what you qualify for. The bank will allow you to choose between a multitude of loans, FHA loans, VA loans, 30-year fixed rate, 15-year balloon rate, etc. If possible, FHA or VA loans are good to go with, but if not available, stick with the 30-year fixed rate loan with the option to pay it off early. The 30-year fix rate gives you lower payments, and they are fixed over the life of the loan. Once you start buying more properties, the bank more than likely won't allow you to get this loan. Getting started. You have to be familiar with the market you buy real estate in. A real estate agent can help you with pulling comps of recently sold properties, which means they will look at comparable properties that recently sold. Or you can do some digging of your own by using sites like redfin.com, zillow.com, and homes.com. You should also know how safe the areas are where you want to purchase real estate. Crimereports.com lets you check the crime in your location. See Figure 3.1, Crime Map. You also need to know how much rent is charged in that area. Rentometer.com and Craigslist.com are good starting points. Talking to a property manager or even real estate agent can also help you with the rent numbers. See Figure 3.2, Local Area Rent. How much rent is charged depends on the home market value, the area where the property is located, and how many rooms are available. A three-bedroom house with two bathrooms will rent for a higher amount than a two-bedroom with only one bathroom if the properties are in the same location. See Figure 3.3, Average Rent. Doing the numbers. If you figure out what the monthly rent is you will be receiving, you can project how much net profit you could get. For this example, you want to cash flow around $300 per month. A duplex is listed at $105,000. After pulling some comps, you know that the fair market value of the property is $95,000. After some negotiations, you were able to push the purchase price to $85,000. The seller wanted to sell fast, 
because she is planning on reinvesting the proceeds from the sale into a different venture. You also got the rent roll, documented monthly rent the landlord receives, which is $600 per door per month. So the landlord is receiving $1,200 a month in rental income. You're planning on putting 20% down on purchasing the property and the bank will finance the rest. Your down payment would be $17,100 and the bank will finance $68,400. Add these two up and you get the $85,000 purchase price. At $68,400 and a 4% interest rate, your monthly mortgage payment is $326.55 on a 30-year fixed rate loan. You have some operating expenses that you need to budget for also. Property management fees, leasing cost, maintenance reserves, capital expenditures, property taxes, insurance, and any other expenses such as HOA. After adding them all up, your total expenses come up to $472.75 per month. To calculate your net operating income, you take your net rental income minus total expenses. The net rental income is slightly different from your rental income. You always want to account for vacancies. At a 5% vacancy rate, your $1,200 in net rental income will come down to $1,140. Your net operating income, NOI, equals $667.25, $1,140 minus $472.75. The NOI never includes your mortgage payment. So the next step is to calculate your net cash flow, which is your NOI minus mortgage payment. $667.25 minus $326.55 mortgage payment. Your net cash flow is $340.75. Let's continue by calculating your cash on cash return and cap rate. Your cash on cash return lets you know how much return you are initially getting from your investment. You calculate this by dividing your yearly net cash flow by the total amount of cash you put in to purchase the property, including repairs and your closing cost. Your yearly net cash flow is $4,088.38, $340.70 times 12 months, and your total cash in is $17,100 down payment plus $4,000 closing cost plus $5,000 repairs equals $26,100. Your cash on cash return equals $4,088.38 divided by $26,000 equals 15.7%. Investors like to use the COC return to compare how they stack up against other investments like stocks or bonds. If you would make an 8% return on your stocks and only 5% on bonds, then this real estate investment at 15.7% is a better deal. Your capitalization rate, or just cap rate, is the ratio of NOI to the property's purchase price. Investors use this calculation to quickly get an answer of how their investment compares to the average. For income properties, an average cap rate of 10% or higher is the goal. The cap rate on this investment is $8,007 yearly NOI, divided by $85,000 purchase price equals 9.4%. Not quite 10% yet, but still close, and most investors would take this deal. Doing your due diligence. You've scoped out a good location, ran the numbers, and like what you are seeing. Your net cash flow should always be in the green. You are ready to place an offer, put in the necessary clauses, and have an inspection and appraisal done. These are a necessary evil you don't want to skip out on. It's also advised to be present and take notes for the inspection walkthrough. There will be some back and forth during this process, but if all goes well, you just bought your first or second property. Time to pop some champagne. Wealth Builder Number 3. Investing. Stock market investing is the last tried and true method of generating and maintaining wealth. The most common method of making money on the stock market is buy low and sell high. However, we are only going to focus on buying stocks in high-quality dividend-paying companies that are trading at a discount. Dividends are money paid to shareholders by the companies that they own shares in. Companies pay out dividends out of their earnings. However, not all companies pay out a dividend. Why focus on high-quality dividend-paying companies? 
because the dividend income provides a stable source of income that keeps growing year after year, and if you reinvest your dividend income into purchasing more whole or partial shares, you will end up generating even more dividend income. PepsiCo pays $2.96 in dividend income. Buy 50 shares and you will receive $148 in dividend income. This might not seem like a lot of money, but with time on your side and continuously buying more shares, you will increase your wealth. In the image below, you can see what your dividend income might look like from PepsiCo if the company keeps increasing the dividend by 8.3% every year and you keep reinvesting the dividends. This is without buying any additional shares. See Figure 4.1, PepsiCo Dividend Income. Now, PepsiCo is just one company. Imagine if you owned 40 to 50 high-quality dividend-paying stocks. Your yearly dividend income would be in the six figures. The dividend companies you need to have on your watch list should be companies that have an easy-to-understand business model, have a competitive advantage, are positioned for growth with a consistent profit margin, manageable debt, and increase their dividend faster than the rate of inflation in the past 10 years. They also need to have a low payout ratio and a good return on equity, ROE. The information can be retrieved from the company's annual report. Let's look at an example. The company Ross Stores is one that would check all the boxes. Ross Stores, R-O-S-T, owns and operates retail stores offering very affordable apparel and home fashion across the United States. They also operate DD's discounts. Savings range from 20 to 60% compared to department stores. This is also where Ross Store's competitive advantage lies. You can visit any of their stores and be amazed at name brand merchandise selling considerably cheaper than the more well-known department stores. Ross Stores is also in a very good position to grow. They are present in 36 states and are continuously opening up new stores. Raw stores have also increased their revenue at 8% on average these past 10 years. See Figure 4.2, Ross Stores Yearly Revenue. Ross has been able to grow their net income by about 16% on average these last 10 years. They have been able to keep their profit margin consistent at 8% the past 5 years. See Figure 4.3, Ross Store Net Income. With an increase in net income and earnings, Ross has also been able to increase their dividend payout nicely at around 16% the last five years while keeping the payout ratio low at around 20%. See Figure 4.4, Ross Stores Earnings and Dividend Payments. A company pays out dividends out of its earnings, so growing earnings year over year positions the company to also increase its dividends. That's why it's very important that companies you analyze increase their performance metrics every year. Ross Stores has also done a great job managing their debt. Looking at their total liabilities and comparing it to their net income before taxes, Ross Stores is able to pay off their total debt within two years. Ross Stores also buys back their own shares. It's important to see if a company does this because if they do, that means there are less shares available on the market. These shares will be retired, which in turn increases the per share value of the company. Right now, Ross Stores has a market capitalization of $28 billion. Market cap means what the company is worth. There are 385.59 million shares outstanding, which means there are that many shares available on the market to buy and sell. $28 billion over 385.59 million shares equals $72.61 share price. Let's say you own 10 stocks in Ross. Your investment is worth $726.10. 10 stocks times $72.61 share price. Hypothetically speaking, if the company bought half of all the shares, there would only be 192.79 million shares left to trade. The company is still worth $28 billion, but now your investment is worth $1,452.20, double. Companies, however, don't go about buying that many shares back. Ross, however, has been buying back its shares, leaving less shares on the market for shareholders. See Figure 4.5, Ross Stores Shares Outstanding. A list of other great companies to keep an eye on and to analyze. McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Fastenal, 
Flower Foods, PepsiCo Inc., T. Rowe Price Group, Realty Income, 3M Company, Unilever, Nike, Lowe's Companies, Kimberly Clark Corporation, Procter & Gamble, Clorox Company, S.D. Lauder Companies. These are all great leading companies in their respective fields that have stood the test of time and they all pay increasing dividends. To find additional companies, think about the products you use on a daily basis and see if these companies pay out a dividend. You would be surprised at which ones do. The previous list of dividend-paying companies grow their dividend every single year without you having to do anything but hold on to your investment. In the image below, you can see that Nike has been able to grow their dividend by about 9-16% to every year over the last 10 years, even during our economic crisis in 2008-2009. See Table 4.1, Nike Dividend Growth Rate. Now, ask yourself if the company that you work for gives you a 13% raise each year. You should reinvest the dividend income to buy more shares and continue to add more money to your account to purchase shares. The savvy investor will use income generated from their business and or real estate properties to invest in the stock market. The goal is to generate enough dividend income to live off, so your dividend checks allow you to retire early. Of course, there are other methods to make money in the stock market, like day trading. This is where you buy and sell stocks for a profit within one day, selling short, penny stocks, forex, commodity and high-frequency trading. These all require work. You only own them for a short amount of time because you are constantly buying and selling and most don't pay a dividend. As a smart investor, we focus on ownership of assets that pay us an increasing income. That's why we don't focus on these methods of generating income. However, there is nothing wrong with these methods. Many investors make great money with them and then switch over to a more passive dividend income strategy. Tip. Four good brokerage firms to get you to start investing in the stock market. Ally.com, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Interactive Brokers. Old Money vs. New Money. You can consider the tried and true methods of building wealth old money because they have stood the test of time when it comes to dependability on maintaining wealth. Stocks and real estate are old money. There are generations of families that inherited fortunes wrapped in old money. Why are real estate and the stock market considered to be old money? Real estate is all around us to monetize. The building you are working in, your home, and the land that you walk or drive on, and the stores or restaurants you visit. The stock market is old money because it's used by wealthy individuals and institutions to park their money where it can keep growing. There will always be a need for a place to park excess amount of wealth. New money, on the other hand, is wealth created in this new age but the future on this sustainability is still up in the air. Many tech businesses fall under this category. Web 2.0 companies like Twitter and Facebook are new money. With a cash inflow of angel investors, these companies took off and are still going strong. But how long and how sustainable these business models are is still to be seen. A company like MySpace pretty much came and went. I like to stick with the business models of the old money. Also, Many entrepreneurs and business owners who create their wealth from new money turn around and invest all or a portion of their wealth in old money like Bill Gates. He is the co-founder of the successful company Microsoft. When he retired, he invested a lion's share of his money in his holding company Cascade Investment. Time to start creating wealth. You should start your journey as soon as possible. The entrepreneur spirit is particularly alive in our youngest generation. Also, when you are young, you have time on your side to make mistakes, learn from them, and still bounce back. You can definitely be an entrepreneur in your older years, like Colonel Sanders from KFC. But the older we get, our life priorities change and most of us lose our zest for adventure and risk-taking. If you are lucky, you might have a family member that started you on your path to wealth building by buying you a stock in a dividend-paying company allowing you to follow how your stock is doing on the market and receive a dividend every quarter. With companies laying off their employees due to outsourcing, automation, and robotics, the world can always use smart young entrepreneurs who can change the world with their bright ideas. Maintaining wealth. It takes time to create wealth. It does not happen overnight. 
You have to plan for it and set goals. Once you have your goals in place, it takes consistency and determination to reach those goals. Maintaining your wealth could be even harder than creating it. The business landscape can change on a whim, economies can crash, customers can lose interest in your products, or you could just be a lawsuit away from going bankrupt. Many things can and will go wrong, so it's very important to also focus on maintaining your wealth. Managing business. In order to maintain your business, you have to be able to delegate and only focus on the tasks that you like doing and are good at doing. Delegating allows you to take your business to the next level by hiring the right personnel. This frees up your time, allowing you to have a life outside of work and enjoy your riches. Besides delegating specific business tasks, you should also automate and outsource. Hiring the right personnel will always be a big challenge. Not only do you need to hire the right people for the job, you also need to compensate them fairly and have additional company perks, like flexible workdays, to make them feel at home. Making sure to hire the right people also puts you in a position to expand your business, and if you want to take it to the next level, you can turn it from a private company into a public one by getting it on the stock market. Listing your company on the stock market or going public has its pros and cons. The company can raise capital with an IPO to inject back into the business. It also puts the company in the public market and creates a sense of accomplishment and recognition for employees' hard work. Cons are that there will be pressure from outside forces such as stakeholders or shareholders on how the company should conduct itself. There are different examples of companies that started as a mom-and-pop shop and they expanded and went public, like Walmart. Do not neglect humble beginnings. To keep your company competitive, you need to be able to generate consistent revenue which increases year over year, increase profit margins, or cut costs. It's extremely important to have the right person manage the company books. Managing real estate. Managing properties should be done by property managers. A good property manager will make your life easy and allow you to sleep peacefully at night. They will handle all tenant questions and complaints. They also know good contractors who will fix, repair, or rebuild your property. They also collect rent and evict non-paying tenants. Make sure to interview multiple property managers to get a good idea of who you want to partner up with. You can get good referrals from your real estate agent or doing a quick search online. You can also find some good mentors at local real estate clubs, which could refer you to their property managers. Most property managers will take 8 to 12% of your gross rent. Some will also need to get paid a leasing cost and or all or some of the first month's rent. So make sure to meet with multiple PMs before you make a decision. It's fairly doable to manage one, two, or three properties on your own, especially if you are the handyman type. But the more properties you add to your portfolio, the more time-consuming it will be to manage them. It goes without saying, but you or your property manager need to listen to your tenants' complaints and make them feel welcome and at home. You don't want to have the reputation of being known as a slumlord. Focusing on cash flow in real estate is not a make-money-fast game. It takes time to build your cash-flowing income portfolio. With every income-producing asset you acquire, you're moving closer to financial freedom. The knowledge and connections you gain will be valuable to take your wealth to the next level. The more properties you buy and loans you are applying for, your debt ratio will go up. If you have too much debt in the form of mortgage loans, banks will be hesitant to give out additional loans for you to buy other properties. You hit this ceiling when you have around 4 to 10 properties. This is when you have to either pay down your existing loans or do some creative financing. Private lending or portfolio lending are some of your options. Once you are a couple of years into real estate investing, you can take your experience, connections, and generated income and start buying commercial properties or even transition into franchising. Having a good accountant or accounting system will become a necessity. Stock Investing Management While you are growing your portfolio of dividend-paying stocks, you need to keep an eye on the businesses you have bought stock in and you need to pay attention to the dividend payments that you get. If you have bought shares in 30 to 50 companies, you should read the annual report of the companies every year they come out. 
In the buying phase, you already did the research by analyzing the company's performance and how the company makes money with its business model. For example, a company like Flower Foods, FLO, produces bakery products, its supplies to warehouses and directly to stores. Another example of an easy business model to understand is Nike. The company designs, creates, markets, and sells athletic apparel worldwide. It's very important to only buy shares in companies you understand. If a company's business model changes, you should be alert because with change comes a lot of uncertainty in a company's revenue and expenses. It's fine if a company expands its business by buying out their competitors, but it can become a problem if a company ventures into a totally different market. For example, Mondelez International, one of the world's largest snack companies, tried to buy out the Hershey Company, which is America's largest chocolate manufacturing company. The buyout was unsuccessful, but Mondelez stayed in their own lane trying to buy a company in their market. Now, if a company like Microsoft wanted to get into the gum manufacturing business, it would raise many red flags, because that is a totally different business compared to the software business Microsoft is in. When companies also take these types of actions, it brings up questions to their existing business model. Is it still relevant? Can it produce increasing revenue? Why would they have to go into a different business? Your dividend stream. While you own these stocks, you will receive dividends on a frequent basis, mostly quarterly. As long as you continue to receive dividends that keep up or grow faster than inflation, which is 3.5%, your money contains its buying power. These dividend-paying companies are inflation-averse and you need to keep them in your portfolio. The only reason to sell these stocks is if they cut or eliminate their dividend. During the financial crisis of 2008, a slew of companies that pay out dividends ended up on the chopping block. A big-name company like General Electric ended up cutting its dividend in half. The list of companies I presented earlier have not gone through this decline. Even during the recession, they were able to increase their dividend payout. These are the types of companies you need to focus on to put on your watch list and buy when the time is right. On your journey to wealth, there are many traps you need to avoid. We will discuss the six most common ones. Jump in without any knowledge. It's really easy to get hyped about a new business idea or real estate purchase and take a leap of faith. You need to have at least some basic knowledge of what you are getting yourself into. Reading this book is a start, but I highly encourage you to also find mentors, read books, listen to seminars, etc. Do not get bogged down by information overload, but do get some basic knowledge. Being scatterbrained. A lack of focus will hurt your progress. It's very important to redirect your energy to focus on a specific goal like a laser beam. This will allow your brain to come up with creative ways to solve problems when you hit a roadblock. If you constantly jump around trying out new ideas, you will spread yourself too thin and only become frustrated. Take things for granted. There is nothing wrong with dreaming about your future and how your life should be. But every once in a while, you should also enjoy what you have already accomplished in life. This will give you the mental energy to move forward and try out new ideas. Advice from the wrong people. Sometimes, people that mean you no harm could give you some bad advice. Taking the world in your own hands and taking entrepreneurial steps can be quite scary. People close to you do not want to see you fail, so they may discourage you from taking risks. That's why it's very important that you believe in what you are doing, because if you are not confident in your own decisions, no one else will be. Not keeping an eye on your numbers. In any business venture or investment that you get into, you need to always pay attention to your numbers. This could be your revenue metrics, real estate calculations, etc. Starting out, it's always best if you can do the numbers before you hire someone else to do this for you. Not having fun. Love what you do, do what you love. If what you do does not excite you, it will just be a drag and you won't give it your all. Failure and frustration will be common, but if you have a passion or even like what you do, you will have a more enjoyable experience while giving it your all. Conclusion Starting the process of thinking about wealth 
and then taking the necessary steps to plan and reach your goals are what will set you apart from the average Joe. The road will not be easy, but it will be fulfilling. Keep in mind that you are not the first person who has decided to take matters into your own hands by focusing on your future by building generational wealth. Use this book as a reference guide and even motivation if you feel that you need that extra push to get started or keep you on the right path. Stick to your goals and hesitation and possible frustration will turn into joy and exuberance.